What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady, I got a burp. Alright, this story's called, Actually Ken, I don't work here anymore, or for you. A friend of mine recently reminded me of this, the absolute best time I ever had dealing with a Karen in the wild. It happened about 30 years ago, so I'm going strictly by memory here. I also have no clue what the name for a male Karen is, so I'll call him Ken. It's actually a pretty good one. Sorry this came out so long, but I think you'll enjoy. I used to work for a chain convenience store, and back in the late 80s, it ran into financial trouble. Corporate decided that, to cut costs, they would sell off and shut down all locations that didn't have a gas station attached. This included my location. Once the stores were sold or closed, our position would be eliminated and we'd be out of a job. Although I was the only assistant manager of our location, I was effectively running things as corporate had decided to pull my manager off to a different location, and the assistant would be good enough since the store was closing anyway. Now on to the story. Here's the cast, head honcho, guys from corporate in charge of selling the store, slightly involved near the end, Ken, entitled dude who bought our location. And of course, moi, me. Once Chain announced that they were closing the stores, it was no secret that we would be shutting down. Of course, us employees were still expected to give good customer service. That was usually no problem as we were in a good area and had pretty decent customers. They liked us, we liked them, but at the same time, we had no flips to give for the occasional Karens. It was nice being able to shut them down. What were they gonna do? Fire us? Good times. I wish I could remember specific instances, but 30 years, they all kind of run together now. The most entitled of all, though, was Ken. Turns out, he bought our location from Chain, and would be taking over in about a month and a half. During that time, I was working with head honcho guys from corporate, doing things at the store level for the sale. Meanwhile, Ken came in a few times a week, demanding that certain things be done, as if he already owned the place. He wanted us to change displays, order specific products, etc. Head honcho guys had already told me to ignore his demands, so all of them were met with some variation of, No Ken, I work for Chain, not for you, and this isn't your store yet, which sent Ken off in all his huffing glory, yelling that I wouldn't be acting like that once he ran the place. Fast forward to the final day. All the other employees had worked their last shifts, and as acting manager, I opened the store that morning. Head honcho guys arrived to go through whatever they needed, and shortly before noon, Ken showed up. Ken and head honcho guys went in the back, and once they came back out, we closed the store in order to finalize everything. Head honcho guys and I cashed out the register for the last time, and most importantly, I turned over my key to the store. Once that was done, something close to the following happened. Okay, Ken, we're done. It's all yours now. They start packing up to leave. Just making sure, Chain no longer owns this location. Ken is in charge now, yes? Head honcho confirms, so I step out from behind the counter. Of course, Ken starts yelling. I think that was his default mode. Where do you think you're going? Home. What does it look like? You get back here and get your butt behind that counter where it belongs. No, I don't work for you. What do you mean, no? I told you things would be different when I took over, and now you have to do what I tell you to do. With a huge grin on my face, I say, you just don't get it, do you? Ken looks confused. You bought the store, you bought the inventory, but you did not buy the employees, and you sure as hell didn't buy me. So I'll say it one last time. I don't work for you. Never have, never will. And since chain store number 1234 no longer exists, I don't work there anymore either. Since I'm no longer needed here, nod to head honcho guys, I'm leaving. Ken starts sputtering and yelling incoherently. Realizing he now has nobody to work the register, as I walk to the doors for my last time. Of course, I can't help myself. As I'm pushing the door open, I turn around, give Ken my best customer service smile, and a cheery, have a nice day! 
If I recall correctly, the store didn't open again for a couple of days, at least, while Ken tried to hire some employees. But anyone from the neighborhood who had seen him treating us so badly before the sale wanted nothing to do with him. And even once it reopened, it didn't last long. I've seen some comments going on about employment contracts, how our job should have transferred to the new owner, etc. So just to clear things up a bit, I hope, the US doesn't have employment contracts, as apparently other countries do. As noted in the original post, corporate told us up front that once the store was sold or shut down, we would be out of a job. If Chain had been bought out by another company, then maybe our jobs would have transferred over. But Ken bought one location, not Chain as a whole or even multiple locations. Ken never asked any of us if we wanted to stay on and work for him. As one commenter added, You don't have enough money to afford me anyway, or something close to that. Several commenters have tried to guess which chain this was, but I haven't seen a correct guess yet, as of this edit anyway. I'm a bit hesitant to add that since, much to my surprise, chain is still in existence. Although I googled them after posting the story, and according to their website, they're down to less than a dozen stores now. Wow, how far they've fallen. They've had, they had like well over a thousand locations if the uh, one, two, three, four is anything to go by. And I'm not saying that's the actual store number, but there was four digits or were four digits grammar. But anyway, that must have been pretty satisfying. Um, it must be kind of cool working for a store that's closing down, um, other than the, the imminent unemployment part. However, if you have something lined up for when the store closes, uh, and you can just be a jerk to anyone who's a jerk to you, I would live, I would thrive, I would absolutely just freaking love it there. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had any experiences working for a closing location, and you could just go off on these Karens and Kens. Also, great story, thank you for sharing. Alrighty, this story's called, I don't wanna be on the news, don't put me on camera. Not sure if this fits, but wasn't sure where else it would. I was standing in line to get into the supermarket today, and the person just before me was a surly older gentleman who was not wearing a mask or facial covering, and appropriately, wearing a biker jacket with a big patch that read, screw helmet laws. <laughs> The store has someone at the front door, usually a teenager or an elderly greeter, whose job it is to ensure everyone entering the store has a face covering, per their nationwide corporate mandate and under our state law. As the man arrived at the greeter, who could not have been a day under 65, she said, Excuse me, you need a face covering to enter? He said to the old woman in this macho authoritative voice, No, I don't. It's okay. And trying to walk into the store. The old woman goes, Actually, sir, you do. It's not just policy anymore. It's the law. And he starts spouting off about how it's an unconstitutional law and how the greeter isn't in a position to enforce laws. A minute or two pass and people further back who can't see what's happening at the front of the line are getting restless. They begin to try and see what's happening. The guy is saying, Look, you're holding the line. If the mask really do work, then everyone who's wearing one is safe, right? And if they don't, then why do you care? And she was getting kind of desperate at this point and said, Well, sir, it's because I could lose my job if I let you in there. This is where I come in. I hadn't spoken up before because this was a big guy and I'm just a student who's no good in confrontation. I figured adding myself to the mix would only make the situation work. So I took out my phone and started recording. I figure he would be less likely to do something violent to the greeter or escalate further if he knew he was on camera. Here's what I had forgotten. I was wearing a shirt from a 5K that was sponsored by our local news. So I had Channel X Eyewitness News in huge print across the front. The guy's wife goes, Good Lord, Howie, the news is filming. What if my work sees this? So he turns to me and starts telling me he doesn't consent to be on TV and starts making a speech how we're all treading on the Constitution, not respecting people's rights to bodily autonomy or privacy. I'm trying to tell him that I'm not with the news and he's like, I don't care if you're on the clock or not. I don't want to be on camera and I won't be forced to wear anything I don't want to wear. When did we forget that this is America? Now this is where it got crazy. 
The line stretched all the way around the building and people towards the end were realizing it hadn't moved in a while and were coming up to investigate. An even bigger, more macho guy comes lumbering up and asks what the problem is, sees this guy going off at the terrified elderly greeter, me shaking and holding my phone, and is like, Sir, sir, what's the problem right now? People are trying to shop. The maskless guy tells him, and I quote, Get away from me. This here isn't your business. The more macho guy proceeds to whip out a badge and identify himself as an off-duty police officer, and that the law is, in fact, his business. First, he tries to have the cop arrest me for putting him on the news without his consent, but I just played dumb at that point. My adrenaline was through the roof, and if I had been able to retain my presence of mind, I would have left by that point and shopped somewhere else. The biker guy is now saying to the cop, this isn't what you went into the academy dreaming about, man, is it? You're not stopping bad guys. You're forcing regular people to go against their beliefs. Cop said, No one is forcing you to do anything, sir. You are free to make your own choices. You can put on a mask or you can go home. Decide which you would like to do because there is a line here. Nah, he already crossed that line. The biker guy keeps saying he isn't doing anything illegal and he has a right to shop in a public business. And the cop just shakes his head and starts quoting the official mask law that the guy is breaking at him. But the biker guy is just talking over him at that point and the cop realizes he isn't getting anywhere. So the cop says, Look, I don't want to escalate this, but you're not giving me a choice in this situation. If you won't leave of your own volition, you're trespassing and starts to explain what will happen. The biker guy is ready to stand firm and says he knows he's in the right, but his wife is smarter and says, Jesus Howie, are you insane? The man's a police officer! And very ashamedly apologizes as she forces him to leave with various threats. Took nearly 15 minutes to get into the store, caused a major backlog of shoppers, and made a poor elderly woman fear for her safety. Just wear the mask or get your groceries delivered. I mean seriously people, of all the hills to die on. Well put dude, well put. Also, fantastic job recording that interaction. That's actually a really good idea. If you're not quite okay with getting directly involved, it's a good idea to at least record so that way the innocent stays innocent and the guilty is guilty. Unless it's the mafia, don't record the mafia. I'll never make that mistake again. I miss my right hand, guys. I used to work here, lady. The wife encouraged me to share this old story from my college days. So here goes, background. I used to work at a convenience store in my college days, one famous for its partially frozen, slurpable drinks. <laughs> we were located just off a major highway in South Florida, so we got a ton of traffic day in and day out, with plenty of regulars each day. I worked there for a few months until a string of robberies started happening at various convenience stores in my area. To paraphrase Will Smith, one convenience store got hit too close to mine and my mom got scared and said, you're quitting that job and finding a different one. Much as I loved that job and hated quitting, my mom was right and the store did wind up getting robbed about a week after I left. Nobody was hurt though. I left on good terms with my boss and coworkers though. Found a job at a local grocery store shortly after that. The story. After class one day, I decided to pop into my old store for a drink and some snacks. Bear in mind, I was wearing a red and black polo that looked distinctly different from the store's uniform, but used the same basic color palette. I was rather chatty with the clerk while I did my shopping. I set my snacks on the counter, then walked over to the drink dispenser, grabbed a cup, and before I could turn the nozzle to start pouring that half-frozen delight, I could hear the familiar call of a wild Karen behind me. Excuse me? Yes? Can you pour me a large red one? Uh, I guess? I poured her one and started pouring one for myself. And I need some taquitos and some scratches too. Cool. Sounds like a fun afternoon for you. Karen walks off to go grab something and I head up front to wait for my cashier buddy, Jeffrey, to finish ringing up a customer so I can also check out. A few seconds later, Karen steps up and stares at me for a minute. I felt her eyes on me and asked her politely, Yes ma'am? I thought I told you I wanted taquitos! Yeah, and scratchers. And? Aren't you gonna get them for me? No, I can't. What do you mean you can't? 
I'm not allowed back there to handle the food or the lotto. You'll have to wait for him, I pointed friend, to check us out first. Excuse me? I'm a paying customer and I'm in a hurry. You work here so I take priority over you. Huh? I don't work here. I'm also a customer and I got in line before you. Don't lie. I know you work here. I've seen you stocking shelves. Oh, uh, I used to work here a while back, but I quit some time ago. Maybe that's why you recognize me? Very funny. Now quit being lazy and do your job. It's bad enough that you're lying, but you're not even smart enough to realize you're wearing the uniform. So I know you're lying. I'm irritated at this point. Really? Of the two of us, who's the smart one? Look at my shirt and compare it to his. Do you see the style difference and lack of a company logo? Karen looks back and forth between me and Jeffrey, who's trying really hard not to laugh at my situation. We had a brief exchange of looks between us where I asked him to help me out, and he basically said, Hell no, this is too funny. After a few seconds, Karen gets flushed, clearly embarrassed. Oh, you don't work here. Ding, 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 we have a winner. Well, then why did you get my drink when I asked you? You're just confusing people now. No, I'm a nice person and helped you because you asked for it. You are clearly not, since you lack basic manners to say please, thank you, or even apologize for the misunderstanding. Karen to my friend. Why didn't you say something then? You kept yelling. I couldn't get a word in edgewise, and he could handle himself. Karen goes quiet and sheepishly asks my friend to get her taquitos and lotto scratchers, which he does while clearly suppressing a grin after finishing ringing me up. I grabbed my stuff and hauled off to the side. The register was right near the door, so I'm waiting there. Karen pays for her stuff and tries to walk past me, avoiding eye contact. Just as some final salt in the rudeness wound, I opened the door for her as she left and said after her, You have a nice day now, ma'am. After Karen got in her car and pulled out, my friend doubled over in laughter at my situation. I threw a Twinkie at his head for not helping me out, then demanded a free taquito in my best imitation of Karen for the inconvenience. Jeffrey, if you're out there reading this, you're a butthole and I miss you. Hope everything worked out for you. Now I want an 80s movie with, with a scene like this, you know, with an 80s uniform and all that crap. Now I'm really happy imagining that as an 80s movie. Wow. Man, the movies back then, they were just something else because I guess the lack of camera quality uh, makes the experience more surreal as opposed to real. And it's just magical, man. I'm sorry, I'm having a moment now. That was a great story. That was, that was a blast to read because I was just imagining it happening like that. The 50s and the 80s, obviously aside from sexism and racism and all that jazz, but like, you know, just this, the way people dressed and the cars and the diners. Because in the 1980s, the, pe the kids from the 1950s are now adults who have money to own and operate their own businesses. So like the 80s diners are 50s diners because 50s nostalgia. Man, who's with me? Am I alone in this? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.